Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In today's video, we are going to take a look at differences between subdivisions and Dynamesh. Before that, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. This is a question we've heard a lot where we've been teaching, and it's one which it was it's a bit of a weird one for us because we've been using Zebra for such a long time that we just always assumed this was a clear like there was clear why you would want to use subdivision and why you want to use Dynamesh, but it's definitely not the case. Yeah, so but also like, because like we were brought up with ZBrush when it had subdivisions, you know? So Dynamesh, for example, came along later uh, after we started using it. So it was a very natural thing for us to sort of fall into. Yeah, we only had subdivisions and then you had Sculptures Pro and all the other features. Yeah. So when you're new to ZBrush today and you're seeing all the features for adding new topology, you have <laughs> Sculptures Pro, you have Dynamesh, you have subdivisions and probably a bunch more features which are hiding somewhere under a rock. The old remeshing. The old remeshing. There are so many different things here. So we are specifically going to be talking about why do you want to use subdivisions and not just Sculptures Pro and, uh, and Dynamesh. So in a character like this, you wouldn't really use subdivisions. Subdivisions is what is the feature you use when you hit Control D a few times, or well, once, and now you can hit it a few times to get higher poly counts. Every single time you subdivide it, you increase the poly count by four. You can find subdivisions under geometry, and you can see it here. So the advantage of subdivisions is that you can sculpt at a low level like this, and then you can hit the D key a few times to go up in subdivision levels, and now you can sculpt at a higher level. If you go up and down, you can now see that you can modify the shape here. Uh, you can modify the shape and your sculpting still remains at the highest level, which is phenomenal because this allows you to have a low risk and a high risk mesh at the same time. But where it's problematic is if you are trying to use something like, uh, you're trying to add like a horn to this guy. This looks fine at this point, right? But you can see here, the topology is crazy stretched. So we're trying to sculpt in this now. Like it's, it's just broken topology. And here is fine, but here is not. So now if we're trying to subdivide even more now to add more resolution to it, we're getting up to a dangerous level very quickly and it's still not great. Yeah, like the whole idea behind whether it's sculpting or your modeling or UVing is that you want to keep things fairly evenly spaced out. So when you start to push the polygons in some direction, you're going to have like consistent results, right? But you can see the resolution of this horn is like, I don't know, a tenth of what yeah. we have on the face. So obviously we have less polygons to deal with and simply just subdividing it. Yeah, it solves part of the problem for you. You still have a lot of uneven distribution of, of, of faces, but it's also just an inconsistent workflow. So this is where Dynamesh and Sculptors Pro comes into play. So if we have uh, if we have the snake pro snake hook brush for instance, and we enable Sculptors Pro, now you can see what happens is that we are getting adaptive topology in these areas. So if now we just hit Shift on this and we smooth this out, now it, we're just reducing all the stuff we had. So you can very quickly just start to add all the horns you can start to add maybe more of a body to this character here you can add little arms to him <laughs> beautiful you can add little little legs so character is mostly done at there this you point. Go. <laughs> <laughs> all done but you can see here right that the, the point is that you can now very quickly add resolution to your model you know if you want to make sure that you want to convert this to an ear for instance you can easily do that we can add like a mouth cavity to him and now we have supporting topology for all the areas there is no stretching here whatsoever because it's actually created fresh topology so fantastic to block for blocking in the character so in short something like dynamesh or sculptors pro which D dynamesh is very similar where you just drag it out like this control drag in short these two features are amazing when it comes to designing the character for blocking in the main shapes and getting everything to work together they're brilliant for that because they're adding supporting topology for it where they're not great is if you want to do a final production asset so let's look at this character here this are here is model and this has topology it has uvs everything is ready and the design is also there you can see it's a fairly refined design we still see some muscle striation everything this is all in topology so you wouldn't want to use something like dynamesh on this and the reason is because now you are first off first of now you're destroying all the topology here as well now you um 
you uh, are removing all of this and you can no longer use it. So if we, for instance, were to use uh, the snake hook now with this topology, you can see that we just destroyed all of our topology. All of our hard work is now <laughs> completely gone. So everything that's connected to that, that would also be something like the UVs, for example, they would no now be destroyed in that area. So the whole sort of debacle there with like Dynamesh or, or Sculptors Pro versus, versus subdivisions is that you can use Dynamesh and Sculptors Pro when you're in the concept phase, but once you start getting into production territory into the pipeline where you want to finish your character, that's when you can use subdivisions on a retopologized version of your model, for example. So the way this works is that now we have our model. This is all ready. This comes from Maya. We hit Control D. Now you can see it increases by four times, probably bringing up to somewhere three million polys. Now you can start to detail this up. Obviously, you shouldn't do this like this because, you know, we still need another layer of sculpting, but you could. You also saw here we got an error message, and this is because we had Sculptress Pro enabled. You cannot work with Sculptress Pro Dynamesh at the same time as you're working with subdivisions. The reason is when you're dealing with subdivisions like this, what you're doing is you're adding more polygons to the existing polygons. For every polygon, you will add four new polygons to it like this. Which means that if you're trying to change the topology, which Sculptress Pro will do, it just doesn't work with that. So you got to make sure before you're using subdivisions that your design is working, that you have now figured out how many horns and how many ears, where the nose is, the shape of the mouth, all these kind of things before adding subdivisions. The advantage of subdivisions is now you can see that we have um, we have a lower mesh but going down the level. We can start still modify it. We can still modify it to a heart's content like this. And now when we go up in subdivisions, it's still here. So a regular way of working like this is, let's go back to our other character, <laughs> this beautiful abomination right here. I think that's better, actually. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well done. So what you would often do is you would sculpt it to a level where you were in a pretty good spot. You would take- Like, like so. Like so, <laughs> exactly like so. Take the dynamic re resolution up a little, we have our own little custom interface. So you would take it up a little bit like so until you have, you know, the main shapes working. You have the, where the eyes are. You have some of the, the nose. You, you have general shapes for it. There's still not a whole lot of very interesting things going on here. But then what you can do, you can turn it into a zero meshing. And so you can now just create a whole retopologized version of this, which just gives you really nice and clean topology to work with. So now you can see that we have very nice and clean topology. And now we can start to subdivide our model up. So now you can see we can go in with subdivisions like here. Control D. And now we can start to sculpt it up like so. Now if you're not sort of ready for this production step yet where you take it out of, of ZBrush and do a proper topology, one way I like to work as well is I'll I'll usually start with with Dynamesh, right? Then I'll concept something up, maybe it's from a, from a sphere or maybe from a base mesh, Dynamesh and add all my details. Then sometimes, sort of like mid production, I will zero mesh it, sculpt that up, and then maybe I'll actually go back and Dynamesh that again because now I've been able to add more details. And then you know I'll go back and forth between Dynameshing sometimes and then zero meshing, and then once I'm ready to like take it to the next step, which is like proper retopology. I'll take it out of ZBrush into something like Maya, retopologize it, and then we have our final topology. But at that step, when we're like final topology, we have UVs, you cannot use Dynamesh or Sculptures Pro anymore because otherwise you'll destroy, you know, what you've just spent days or hours making with the new topology. So everything we'll be doing on this beautiful sculpt <laughs> while Morten has been talking, this is uh, obviously, obviously it's absolute atrocious sculpting and I know better than this, but uh, it's all legit for, for subdivisions. You know, we're starting with a very clean base, but everything we've been doing here, none of this is pushing what subdivisions can do. We're not adding another horn or ears or whatever it is to it. So everything here is legit in, in terms of this. You can start to add, you know, like anatomy to it and whatever it is. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to go into something like snake hook and now start to like give him these huge horns here at the back, something like this. This is not okay. Yeah, subdivisions is for adding surface details, basically. Sculpting up your muscles or even further when you're adding pores, whereas Dynamesh, for example, is for creating new shapes that extend, you know, beyond the silhouette, for example, for your character. 
So in short, uh, Dynamesh Sculptors Pro for designing and subdivisions for refining. So yeah, that about concludes this video. Uh, let us know if you have any ZBrush questions like this, if there are any misconceptions you might have about uh, any features in ZBrush like this. It's really hard for us to actually know what these problems are for people because we've been using ZBrush for such a long time and just seen, see it evolve. But if you're a new user and you're starting off with ZBrush today, what, what questions do you actually have? We would love to solve the pain you guys are having in ZBrush. So let us know in the comments and make sure to like, uh, comment and subscribe and also uh, hit the notification bell as well to get notified every single time we put out a new video. If you're looking for training or high quality assets, make sure to stop by the Flip Normals Marketplace. And if you're interested in supporting us by buying our merchandise, you can check that out in the description below.